Um, I'm Cassie, and I'm going to reiterate what Amory said and respond to Jenny's points after. Uh, we're the affirmative side, so we're for legalizing physician-assisted suicide and adopting the Oregon model, which is the Death with Dignity Act. We believe that by not, not allowing physician-assisted suicide, it goes against our rights in the Ninth Amendment. According to the ConstitutionCenter.org, the Ninth Amendment contains unenumerated rights, which include important rights such as the right to travel, the right to vote, and the right to make important decisions about one's health and body. Also, we believe in a patient's autonomy, which is the right to control one's own body. PsychCentral.com states that the patient's autonomy is considered one of four cardinal principles of medical ethics, along with benevolence, non-maleficence, and justice. So if a patient is in pain and suffering, we believe it's the right, um, they deserve the right to end that if that's what they want. Um, currently, four states have legalized physician-assisted suicide, which are Oregon, Montana, Vermont, and Washington. And 46 states, including California, consider assisted suicide to be illegal. We believe that California should pass the Oregon, should pass Oregon's Death and Dignity Act, which allows terminally ill patients to end their lives through the voluntary self-administration of lethal medications prescribed by a physician. Oregon's Death and Dignity Act requires um, them to be an adult who is capable, is a resident of Oregon, has been determined by the attending and consulting physician to be suffering from a termina terminally ill disease and who has voluntarily expressed his or, his or her own wish to die, may make a written request for medication for the purpose of ending his or her own life in a humane and dignified manner. And that's according to thehumanist.com. Um, Oregon's Death and Dignity Act was approved in 1994 and went into effect in 1997 and is still in effect till this day. Uh, like Emory said, in the 15 years that the Death and Dignity Act has been in effect, 1,050 patients were prescribed medication and of those, 637 actually used it. Um, Barbara Combs Lee, who has 14 years of experience in Oregon medical practice, states that the purpose of the act is, is to provide comfort and peace of mind, as well as a peaceful death at home with loved ones. The purpose is um, the purpose is to improve the quality of life for a dying person, not to cause death for cancer or other fatal diseases are already producing that end. Um, in response to what Jenny had said, she states that the patient who the patients who want the medication aren't in the right. Um, state to be making that decision because they're mentally ill, but um, in the Death and Dignity Act, uh, it states that if either physician believes that the patient's judgment is impaired by a psychiatric or psychological disorder, they must refer the patient for a psychological examination. So uh, these patients who are considered mentally ill have to actually be checked out and um, for depression and all that. And also, Jenny brings up religion, but um, however, we have the separation of church and state, that's according to the Establishment Clause and the Free Exercise Clause. Um, so First Amendment states that Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion. So the Death and Dignity Act has no um, relevance to religion. Um, she also states that the Death of Dignity Act goes against uh, what doctors have to take, which is the Hippocratic Oath. Um, however, the Death of Dignity Act waives that oath because of the patient's knowing and willing request for the medication. The oath states that they will give no deadly medicine to anyone if asked nor suggest any such counsel. However, that statement is in regards to murder and taking life without consent or by malicious means. Um, the doctors aren't supposed to suggest physician of suicide um, death, but they have to be, uh, the patient has to request it. And lastly, Jenny stated that the 15 day waiting period is ineffective because of a study that she showed, but um, we don't really see how that's relevant because we're not encouraging terminally ill patients to receive medication and end their life. We are just saying that we should have the right to do so if that's what we want to do with it.